Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we have 2009 Toyota Sienna and we have the battery light on even though the engine is running so to start I have hooked up the multimeter so it's 12.07 volt now so I will hit acceleration so it increased to 12.1415 but then it goes down and with the good running alternator you're supposed to get at least 14 volt up to 15 so I will turn on the fan and as you can see as soon as we increase the load the voltage goes down I'll turn on the lights 11.7 so that's a perfect indication that the alternator is wearing out not supplying enough voltage all right so we'll be replacing the alternator i will leave links to the parts and tools in the description to the video so here is the alternator and we will need to remove this coolant hose so obviously it's full with coolant so first thing that we will do is drain coolant you can drain a portion of it i will be draining all since i want to replace it at the same time so let's get under the vehicle all right so this is the driver's side of the vehicle we have a vehicle on the jack stands right now so there is the valve there is a little connector that we can put the hose on and safely drain it off all right so the hose is connected now let's try to open this well i still have the fill plug closed so this start to flow so we go under the hood and open the plugs when you deal with coolant you want to make sure that the engine is cold there is no pressure build up if you are not sure Put the rag on top of it and then open the valve. So the flow is quite good. So I would expect to have more than one jack, so I'll watch so it doesn't overfill. But for your purpose, if you're not changing the cone, then just draining enough so we don't get lots of fluid coming out of the hose a couple of liters probably next i will remove the negative terminal out from the battery it's 10 mil wrench a little socket would work too so the battery is disconnected and at the same time we'll put the charger on so it charges while we work on it so 15 mil is the box end The DC line is kind of on the way. Okay, so try one more time. So now we can pull the belt out of the alternator and we will leave it as it is as we don't want to fight it at the end of the day trying to put it back next we will pull this engine cover off just use the bungee cord to get this hose it's being stubborn I will just grab a hose, twist it a bit so we break the seal. Now we can pull it off. And it's nice not to get any big spill spills because we have drained the coolant beforehand. So just 
push that hose down. Next we will do those electrical connectors. So we're looking at 10 mil over here. There's a little imp. Try not to drop it. Pull it off. Next, we will get that connector off. The same, you just press over here. Point hard, this will lift, and you will be able to remove it. This is out of the way. So now we should be able just to try this piece out. And getting closer. I just want to make sure that we have enough room for this alternator to come out. Came, come out. So there is a one more connector just below. It's talking about this one. Well, that's a nice star. We can probably work just with the pointer. So this is the connector that I meant. So I hope when I remove it, I will get a little bit more wiggle room on the hose, on the wiring harness. So then there is a, just over there, in the plastic clip that's hold, that holds this harness. We probably will go ahead and pull it from over here too. Just come here, pull this up. Let's we'll see which way we want to move this harness. Okay, it seems like if we disconnect it from the bracket at the bottom, we should be able to move it to the right. Just by using those little pliers, I was able to squeeze the back end of the clip and pull it out. So right now, this harness is quite loose for us. Hopefully that's enough to get the, get the alternator out. Okay. So now we have one bolt at the top that is easy to access, but very similar is just on the opposite side. So we'll try to show you that. We'll try to remove it. So I'll try to stick my camera and show you where the bolt is. So I will try to point it with that laser. That's the bolt, and if we look just over there, we'll just use a little extension and we'll try to get it out. Okay, so instead of small extension, just using a deep socket, so we can switch to a smaller ratchet now. So the deep socket and three eighths inch ratchet. So we'll get this out. So here is the bolt. Next we'll remove this one at the top. And this alternator pulley is super hot. It's probably I don't want to say hotter than the engine, but it was impossible to hold my hand against it. Just grab a bigger ratchet. So 
wonder if it has something to do with performance. Maybe it was slipping inside. This one is way longer one. Okay, so there is one more bolt that is kind of on the right hand side of the alternator and I will try to point a beam to it. So that's where it is. It's also 14 mil. And if I take it off, so basically it's in between the exhaust alternator and just above the AC compressor over there. So you'll need to fish a few extensions most likely with the swivel and get it out. I have my extension with the swivel, but I will go ahead and remove this exhaust shield that should give us a little bit more access. This second bulb here. And the third one just in that corner. Side. It's already better access now. I'm actually st stick my finger there, and that's 12 mil, not 14 mil, as I mentioned before. So I will just use our big ratchet and try to get it off. Not easy to see what's going on over there. But basically, all we do is just removing that bolt. So now I'm just using two extensions in the socket and moving it by hand. And I will stop recording since I need to reach there to grab the bolt. Okay, so here is the bolt. And at this point, you should be able to get that alternator out. Just try it out. It's loose now. Okay, so seems like there is a wire attached to that bracket that we're trying to pull pull off and just use little pliers to remove that harness from that bracket and to use a primer you don't want to put too much pressure on on the wiring okay so this is loose now and this is ready to come out. So this will probably take a bit of drying, but it should come out. Okay. 
halfway out. Okay, there's that bolt. Disconnect this. This hose will be on the way, so we'll remove it. So there is another bolt sticking out of this alternator that is hitting this hose. Okay, there's another bracket. Okay. It's out. Okay, so now we need to transfer this bracket from the Old alternator to the new one. Just like that. So this seems to be the original Toyota alternator, which, yeah, it's 2009. And the vehicle has over 200,000 kilometers on it. On a Dodge vehicle, it usually fails 100,000 kilometers earlier. So this is kind of quite impressive. So let's get this one in. So as you can imagine, it should go in similar way as it came off, came out. So it will be again lots of wiggling and tiggling but we need to get it in somehow This hose back on. Seems like some oil is coming out. Okay. Seems better. All right. Perfect. So next we will go ahead and we'll reinstall that wiring harness back into it's like one wire 
into that bracket because seems like the main purpose of that bracket is to hold that wire so we will just you guys won't see anything i don't see anything just trying to get it okay yeah it's all clipped so that wire is attached to that bracket so now we can put it back in place so so this piece just over here it moves when you start tightening that's why right now it goes in quite easily but when you tighten it it will push against this bracket okay, so this one is started we'll go ahead and we'll start the one on that bracket we have put a tiny bit of electrical tape on this bolt so it doesn't fall down when we try to get it in okay, so let's pause so that metal bolt is in place just over there it's not tight yet I just want to install the bottom bolt first until we have a little bit of wiggle room so again we won't be able to show much just by feel get the bolt in all right so now when all the bolts are started we will work them this 12 mil head bolt will torque to 18 foot pounds so instead of using swivel and tons of long extension you can just use two shorter ones and the other two we will torque to 40 foot pounds so we will do the bottom one first that's 40 And we'll do the same for this one. That's 40. So next we will just do what we've done in reverse order. So we will put this clamp back on with that little hose. We will plug this back on. So we will plug the AC back on, we will attach the harness to the bottom bracket. Next we will put this shield back on. Though before we place the bolts, we'll apply some anti-seize on each bolt because those have a tendency to rust quite well on the hot exhaust manifold but to my surprise those are still original bolts and they are in a fantastic shape We'll get those placed. Next we will install this stud. It's E5. You get it out of the old alternator and put into the new one. All it does is just hold this harness in place. So if you don't have E5 socket, it's not 
a big deal you can probably just zip tie it so it's it stays in place and not bouncing around but I will just transfer it to the new one okay. and we will put this rubber boot back on put this harness back on okay next we will put this back on and we will just push this horse back for now till we install the coolant hose we'll just push it on and we we'll use channel lock pliers or if you have a specialty tool for this even better this could be a pain to get that back Now it's locked, of course. Just need to make sure that it's square on the pipe. All right, so now we install engine cover back on. There's all the same things in place. All right, so next I will fill it up with fresh coolant. All right, so this is the second jug with the coolant. So we got roughly five, six liters out. Just plug this back. Remove the hose. Okay, the reservoir is almost empty, so there is no much need to empty it even more. So using this funnel, I will leave a link in the description to this kit. It's quite cheap on Amazon. So for coolant, I'm using 30% distilled water, 70% coolant. The reason is by the time it mixes with the rest that is inside the engine right now and radiator, it will be roughly 40, 60. And we are in Canada where the temperature goes below 40 minus 40 Celsius winter time. So 50 50 is not a really good fit. In terms of the cone type, just use concentrate. The color doesn't really matter. You can buy the one for the Asian vehicles, or you can just buy a generic one. It's the same thing, just different color. At this point, I will go on the other side of the radiator and we'll open this plug. And I will expect this will help. Oh yeah, for air to escape. And you can see how fast that went down. Okay, as soon as the fluid starts to come out of this well, I have shut it down. So now the coolant stays in the funnel, so we will do some massage to our houses. That's the idea to get the air out. Do this one. We'll do this on the other side. Alright, at this point, I think we're going to start the vehicle. So we got the battery terminal tight. Alright, now it's really important to, when we start the vehicle, to watch for the voltage. Very often, the right now we have 13.11 volt. Very often, the new alternator can come with the defective voltage controller and the voltage will go to like 20 volts and you don't want to run a vehicle like that. So when we start, we will be watching our 
voltmeter so it's well so it's 14 volt that's exactly where we want it to be and obviously the battery light went off so right now it's just a matter of getting air out of the cooling system so we will run the engine until it gets hot to the normal operating temperature like 90 degrees make sure that this hose gets hot so it means that the thermostat opens if not, we will keep massaging until we get all the air out. You can see that it's bubbling, so air is coming out. But this will be the procedure for the replacing the faulty alternator on 2009 Toyota Sienna. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please check links in the description to the video. Support this channel. And just do it yourself.